I'm more concerned about the fact that you went and saw the last airbender, my man. What was <laughs> yeah. that like? I didn't know better. I was a kid. I knew yeah. better. I saw the series, and my mom and I went to see it. All right. To be fair, it was a good time with my mom. Every time I go to a movie theater with her, it's always good. But the problem is that I hated it, but yeah. my mom loves it. Oh, no. But she doesn't know. She, she, she had, didn't see she the get to see the series. Right. I try to get her to watch it. Yeah. He's like, ah, it's too cartoony. I'd rather watch the live action movie. <laughs> show, show your mom. Here, here's this trick, Stormcrow. Do these Don't reaction videos. Out. Show your mom like the reaction videos to like Iro uh, crying over her son or Jet, you know, and dying and like all this shit, <laughs> all the like adult things that happen there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just it's just a kid show. Yeah, um, she is still waiting for the sequel to The Last Airbender, by the way. <laughs> aren't well, they, they're doing a new one, actually, aren't they? Because they have Avatar Studios. Well, uh, I saw the movie Last Airbender in theaters. And, I, I mean, not in the theaters. I saw it you know, when it came to video. But I saw that one. Thought it was all right. Until I watched the actual series. And I'm like, oh, they shorted yeah. this big time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as a normie. Seeing that movie on its own, I didn't think I was entertained by it. I thought it was interesting, and I wanted to see a sequel to that. I didn't realize how much I was missing until I went and mm-hmm. watched this actual seasons, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> he tried, hey, but he, oh, did he miss the mark? I <laughs> mean, if I'm being fair here, I honestly would have found it hilarious how they were going to do a Sula in the sequel. Like, how they were going to butcher her. You know, how the heck do you do that? How the heck do you adapt at the live action? How the heck did Azula get past uh, Nickelodeon censors to begin with? Like this crap that she I does. mean, listen, after reading Game of Thrones, especially the Cersei chapters, Azula could have been a lot worse. All right. You know what I'm saying? That's fair. <laughs> I mean, also, it is what I do. I am Redoubtenheimer. <laughs> also. But I, I'm very sad to say I cannot watch every time Suko and Sula talk on the show without thinking about Jeremy, uh, Jamie and Cersei from Game of Thrones. I'm like, if this if this was R-rated, this, this would be a very different <laughs> scene right now. Oh, no. A live-action series? No. It can't look, be well enough alone. Look, look, the movie, of, Avatar... the movie of Oppenheimer only has one atomic bomb. I can only drop one atomic bomb tonight, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to drop any atomic bombs, but I can't because I don't want to get uh, Wrangler canceled here. Well, I got one more bomb to drop. It is not atomic, but it is a, it's got a little bit of pump punch to it. Let's see. Where is it? Boom. Oh. Why am I not? Uh, an article. An article. Netflix and Amazon refused to stream Sound of Freedom. Well, Before it went into theaters, they were both given the option yeah. to stream it, and they both rejected it. And More this money is, for Angel This Studios. is too bad. Netflix could have used that as a great way to like try and seek redemption after the whole cuties debacle. Yeah, dude. I would have. By the way, is that the, still uh, on yeah, Netflix? Uh, no, it was removed. About time. it was removed. Apparently, it was. It, it caused them too much pain, uh, too much uh, chaos. Yeah. But, Gentlemen, uh, I have to ask you, um, is it morally right to stream cuties instead of A Sound of Freedom? No. No? Why no. not? What do you mean? I, I want you to explain to me why this makes sense to these people. But I in, in <laughs> Sound of Freedom, what what happened to the children was implied. And in fact, as Maji brought up a couple weeks ago, the kids were given a different different script, so they didn't understand the horrors that were actually being portrayed. They were protected from that. In Cuties, they took these three eleven year old girls and pretty much taught them dirty dancing and filmed it. 
And not, not only that, their excuse, the original fucking gaslighting excuse they had was, oh, well, in France, the age of consent is 14 years old. Well, these fucking they ain't 14 either. Under the age of 14. Yeah. So you can't even say, like, cultural difference and shit. I'm no mathematician, but I don't need to be a mathematician to understand one thing. In, I guess in, what in Gear our, had in said our, in the chat. In our, <clears throat> in our culture here. 18 is a thing and must be observed at all times. That's a good, solid line. I don't think anybody debate. I mean, a couple states may be 16, but in general, 18, good, solid line. Everybody understands. What's so difficult? Don't cross it. Um, Leave that be. They they Um, don't know what morals are in um, that they're trying to normalize their deviancy. Well, this... The thing ahead, I, was gonna, I was gonna try to say, I'm trying to say that the reason that you got all paused on that, it was like kind of confusing. You realize it's like you couldn't like understand, like you all know the truth why you know the truth why, like, but you can explain or like try to make someone understand that truth. You it's hard to understand the truth. It's just it really is. It's hard to convey. It's just it's it's just is it's because of these. I can give you the reasons. I understand those reasons. It's this that's the truth. Try well, there's also a matter truth. of Maybe That's, somebody didn't that. watch either movie and didn't it's understand horrid. what the difference was. I, don't, I do not need to go anywhere new cuties. No, okay? you don't. The only way I would love That's to get near my cuties is to go near the director and gouge your eyes out. That that would be beautiful for me to do. Bottom line opinion. though, the parents allowed that to happen, and that shocks me. Uh, and the, yeah, it doesn't that doesn't shock me. Yeah, get the blood eagle. Right. Rage and yeah. Did you say yeah, Blood Eagle? Much. Yeah, all the people involved uh, in that movie would get the Blood Eagle. So, uh, have have you read The Perils of Sasha Reed? No. What is that? Dude, you should. Yeah, you should. That's a yeah, I, that, that, That'll film. be up your alley, I think. Yeah. What is it about? Um, you ever watch um, Perils of Penelope Pitstop? No. Uh, wacky races only from South Park. <laughs> oh, so, uh, Hanna Barbera had these uh, like uh, wacky races things. One of the Hanna Barbera cartoons was basically uh, these like four or five, maybe six little gangster guys from the 1940s and their pit stop girl, Penelope, Penelope Pit Stop. And the premise is that she'd always get captured and she had to get rescued. You probably know the villain from this series. Dick Dastardly and Muttley. Mm-hmm. Yes, them I remember. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is one of the more like you probably remember the villains more because they stand out a little bit more in this series. But Penelope he sounded off. a lot like Gargamel. Yeah, and Muttley and that. <laughs> I mean, come on, that laugh. Yeah, uh-huh. it's, yep, it's classic, right? So, um, Penelope would always get captured. The, the per- perils of Penelope, um, Sasha Reed. Yes, perils of Sasha Reed. Is basically the pit stop girl for this racing team in this like post apocalyptic it's not even post apocalyptic, like alternate future, all on this old world of his own. And she'd always get captured and the team have to like come and get her. But she's she knows that she's sexy. And she this is like a really sexy writing. And um it really pushes it up to like that point and then like all hell breaks loose. If you ever seen the seri- series Super Jail on Adult Swim? I it has a only, little formula. I've only formula caught it that series. It sets up. Good night, Kahuna. Up, Thanks, man. Uh, at the very last uh, minute, everything like goes to chaos. The, it's a riot and thing like that. It's like that, and like all this little like short stories. And they're not really short stories, but they're all like the perils. You know, the perils of Sasha Reed. They're all different little stories of her. But it's really good. All right, but what does that have to do with giving the people involved in Cuties a Blood Eagle? Blood Eagle is the name of the uh, one of the big villains. Yeah, that final chapter is pretty uh, pretty intense. It gets it gets intense. It it it's he paced it pretty well. You put that chapter at the end at the right for reasons. You know, you're not going to start with that Blood Eagle story. He starts with something a little bit lighter and brings you into that. Andrew Campbell, hey, hey good to see you. Howdy, buddy. Hey, welcome yeah. to the party. Maps belong on walls. <laughs> yes, they do. Well, you know, I can only drop one nuke a night. 
Uh, no, sir. Uh, I disagree with you on that. Uh, maps belong on Spears. Spears. <laughs> Well, how do you think we get him on the wall? You put him on the spear and you post it on the wall. Come on. No. Philip no, Raz, I, I, I think they said the it is no longer up there. As an example. Come on. Vlad the Impaler taught you better. Okay, so <laughs> Sound of Freedom <laughs> as of this morning stat at 123 million made. Yeah. Ooh. Awesome. And it's, keep yeah, in mind, this is today. not internationally. Yeah, and they have less theaters than the other movies to compete with. So the fact that they're in third place against, uh, I think Barbie's one, Oppenheimer is two, and the Sound of Freedom is third. And considering how it's in a lot less theaters and doing that well, yeah, soon, that's pretty good. Soon it will be released in Mexico, but I don't think that's till next month.